you know, we kind of all feel and kind of want a majority of the same things. And, you know, one person might be allergic to like peanut butter or some weird shit. And it's just life is, um, it's not that weird. Life is very, allergy is pretty common these days. That's crazy to me, but it's like, that's what makes it different is that you can't have a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we getting a Vince Staples album right now, bro? I'm happy to have one, but what was the purpose of making it? There's always a purpose. Uh, just to make it. Um, you know, we had a lot of stuff going on as far as things with this show and just, you know, kind of movement in other areas of life. And uh, just say, why not, you know, making it kind of encapsulate this time period, so to say. And um, I had one more on a... Uh, my contract, so I was like, let's just get it out the way to be completely transparent. But, I haven't hoped for nothing but that. I feel like that's been the, the theme throughout. Yeah, it was like, it was a why not kind of moment. A why not, but also there's a pretty good why as well. Yeah, it, I mean, there's always a why when it comes to music if, you know, you're doing it hmm. or approaching it the way I approach it. It's just, you know, a timestamp, so to say. You kind of see where you fit, your thoughts, like alongside this production or whatever. Hmm. You know, it's current to you at the moment, and then, you know, you put it out, and you make the next one. It's good to see you, man. Good to see you, too, man. It's good to see you, man. It's, it's like such a fond place in my heart for you as a human being. For reasons I don't ever need to, like, say to you right now, it'll come with wisdom <laughs> and wine. You've walked this line for me where you're very, very honest, but you don't stand on it. You know what I mean when I say that? You're not like, I'm an honest guy. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to make a statement, da 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 you just, It just happens naturally through your music and the way you communicate. And I really respect that because I think sometimes when we're trying to be honest, it, it can very quickly become a soapbox that we that we stand on or we find ourselves on. I'm an honest person. Yeah, I mean, I feel like <laughs> I just believe in leaning in on who you are, so to say. Mm-hmm. You know, if I wasn't honest, I wouldn't be, I guess. You know, you are who you are. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Probably not the best way to think about things, but that's kind of where I fit with the thing. So I just look at it as, you know, being comfortable in your own skin, especially creatively. Well, let's let's take it from there then. That's a good place to start, really, because when I first met you back in probably 2015, and it's nearly 10 years on, you know, really getting, you're, you're hitting... Congratulations, bro. You're in anniversary mode. Yeah, I'm getting old, man. You're in anniversary it's mode, man. It's a good man. thing. It's okay. 10 years is, is a useful anniversary. Yeah, definitely. It's a good one, though. It's a good one to have. You wait till that debut album is 25, baby. We'll be talking. We'll be like, I'll be old as fuck by then. <laughs> <laughs> I'll still be here, though. Um, so you think about the growth, and it's probably not something that you, that you maybe you do, maybe you don't reflect on too much. The records will do that for you. But in a moment like this, given we've known each other for a majority of your recording career, if you could take a couple of seconds to just reflect on where you think you've grown the most as an artist and as a creative person, where you would acknowledge the the growth. In every facet, really. Um, from songwriting to just the ability to execute certain things. Um, you know, it's, it's just as deconstructed as it was in the beginning. Like, it's not a bunch of people who I work with or who I, you know, even know, to be honest. So being able to do more um, and keep that insulation in a sense, um, being able to kind of give directives. Um, patience is important in music, mm. especially when you're, you know, dealing with other people. Um, no matter what, people aren't going to know your thoughts and everyone views things different ways. So just being able to convey the stuff you want to convey and I mean, not coming across the wrong way or not, you know, misdirecting someone. That's really important. Um, That's a really good point. Yeah, singularity. Like not, I've never wanted to do anything specific as far as like uh, reach a certain audience or have a certain amount of success or a certain um, benchmark awards, nothing like that. So, you know, a lot of people do work for those things, you know, and that's perfectly fine. Um, but you want to make sure that you're not telling someone, you know, say you walk into a studio with four kids that want, you know, a Grammy more than they want anything in the world. Mm. And, you know, you walk in and you say, oh, we're not making this to get Grammys. Well, then you just kind of deflated your room. Mm. Um, so, you know, learn how to coordinate those kinds of things and see what everybody wants separately and 
making, you know, the, a collective decision to make sure everybody's happy with it. Like that kind of stuff is. Getting the best out of everybody without exactly. falling into someone else's singularity. Um, so, so what is, now that you've released multiple albums and television series and lots of short form creative ideas and, you know, you've, you've in process without declaring it like a lot of artists do. I'm going to do all of this. It's great manifest. But you're a process human. Like at the end of this 10 years, you take a look at your at your slate and it's packed. It's a really good creative portfolio, right? Um, what is the most important part of that, do you think? Ideation, execution? Which one would you put the most emphasis on? Um, the most important part is um, execution, the part that I care about the most, probably ideation. I, um, right. But the most important one is execution. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one that I think a lot of people, the unspoken challenge, I think, in the creative process is the execution. That's, yeah. that's, that's where you trip. Yeah, and, um, you know, execution is a spectrum, so to say. We haven't, um, I, I don't have anything that's deemed to be successful in any medium. Like, because, you know, success is based on certain things. You sell this many records, it's successful. You sell this many tickets, they're successful. We're, like, below the threshold on everything. But it depends on the goals that you set out to do and kind of where you want to live in the world. Can so I tell so? you what I think success is? I think yeah. I lived a pretty, I'm well into my life now. Mm -hmm. Having the ability to keep showing up and doing what you love. And I, and I agree that, and that's what that's, I agree with that. That's kind of what I'm saying is that the fact that you can kind of determine that the execution is really important because you have to be executing kind of towards something. Yeah. You can't just, a lot of people can probably do well with it, but I personally can't operate with like a blue sky type scenario it just doesn't make any sense to me so mm. i think execution on any scale is important yeah i agree with that it's funny i've had lots of friends of mine throughout my life who've had big hit moments big hit moments like all of a sudden we were on the same hill and then they're on a much bigger hill like i open my eyes and they're just like way up there i'm like how is it up there and they're like it's fucking awesome up here you can see everything and do whatever you want it's great and then you close your eyes and you open them again they're right back down where you were and i'm like how is it and they're like it's kind of better down here yeah. <laughs> it's like it was pretty thrashy and hectic up there and i'm glad i survived it i think i think it can get on it can get to you yes yeah, a talent to be able to um to be able to have that level of success and um maintain it um, but you got to know who you are and kind of where you fit in those things. And I think with me, I've always been aware of kind of where I fit within the ecosystem of this whole thing. And that allows me to kind of create freely. What do you think that is? Can you put it into words where you think you fit? What's the... Yeah, I mean, I'm not, you know, obviously like an A-tier artist. I'm not, I don't make music that's, you know, no one's coming to me not from a fan standpoint looking for a single or looking for... um. I don't know, party record or things of that nature. So I don't feel those pressures, but I do know um, the people who listen to my music probably looking for thoughtfulness or creativity, the people that, you know. We wait for them. We yeah. wait for these moments. Yeah, so it's like um, that lets you know kind of what you need to execute on and other things you can kind of take risks on and if, you know, you're willing to. Or you can take risks on the part that people like. You know, me personally, I just kind of do whatever I want. Yeah, fuck it. Write a hit sometime. Who cares, right? Do it for fun. It's not like you haven't had a couple of hits in your, in your canon, quote unquote. But also there's life art, there's lifestyle artists in terms of how we tr relate to them as fans. There's, there's songs that fit into our lifestyle. Get in my car. Five cars are playing the same song. Lifestyle. And then there's life. And there's people that you look to that are going to just keep moving through your life with you and help you better understand yourself because you trust them. It's like, oh, I know you. And I think you know you your songs know themselves and fans know you through the music. That's how I, I think we relate yeah. to you. It's a beautiful thing. It sounds good to me, man. Sounds good, right? <laughs> sounds good. Definitely. So um, the first thing that we notice when we press play on this album is, um, is that, as always, it's a thoughtful experience, not just a collection of songs. I feel like you put it together. There's a thread throughout, at least sonically and production-wise, and a feeling that you're striving to achieve here. Who did you choose to work with? What was going on in internally for you that made you want to kind of move in this way that where the, the drums, the instrumentation, it's almost got like a sort of 70s kind of deep, a little bit Jeff Barrow, Portis Hetty kind of breakbeaty type vibe to me? Um, you know, it was just kind of what I felt at the moment, being able to work with, you know, the same people that worked on this project worked on the last one. 
Um, and not like we spoke about getting people into that space. Um, with music, I just kind of feel and think of, of things the way that I do. Like it's nothing is ever really that deep. It's just kind of listening to your instincts of the things that you feel and, you know, trusting those things. So, you know, Michael Zuru being there again, mm. um, LaKen Taylor, um, St. Mino worked on it. My character worked on it. I have a Cardo um, beat. He was on Ramona too. So um, Ron was on it. A couple people I might be forgetting, Julian. Um, but yeah, just just you know, making the things that just make sense at the moment. Yeah, you, you. Every time I've ever tried to dive into your writing a little bit, I felt that there's there's been a variation of that response. Like I don't, it's not that deep. But I but the lyrics before me, you know, would contradict that if I was taking them on face value, right? The opening of Shame on the Devil, which is the song we're playing off the album which is coming um i long for loving and affection right it's a fucking super fucking big opening statement for a song it's like it's it's like a pretty honest open declaration and from there there's just a lot of acknowledging the flaws of the human experience and the push and the pull of accountability right and, and what i'm willing to hold myself accountable for and what i'm willing to accept that I'm uh, the mistakes that I make and, and that's okay too. Yeah, I, I feel like it's a great song. It's deep as fuck, I actually think. <laughs> yeah, but when, like when we think about depth, you know, a lot of the times from a creative standpoint, it's like, say, thoughtfulness comes with time or reapproach and, you know, things are deep. If it's okay, I created this because of something that happened years ago and then I put it in the back of my mind and then I revisit that moment. Essentially it's like turn the beat on and if I don't have a song in five minutes, turn the beat off. And whatever the music sounds like is what the music sounds like. But I think life in and of itself has its own layers and it has these kind of elephants that we kind of ignore. And um when you acknowledge those things that are like you said, human or that everybody kinda of understands or goes through, um then it get to be considered it could be considered deep but i look at it from a standpoint of like it's just kind of what popped up and trying to match the emotion of the music or just kind of thinking about what i feel like would sound good based on my perspective because we only know the things that we know like i don't really talk about a vast variety of shit like i don't step outside of my wheelhouse because i just honestly don't care about the things that i don't think about um and that's just, so there's, no, there's not a lot of projecting the otherworldly emotions that you be feel others might be going through it's got to be remain very core to your experience well yeah but we're experiencing the same thing so to say and i think that if you can kind of you know it's not rocket science in the day if we can kind of think about the things that we're dealing with or the things that pop up in our head they're probably popping up in someone else's head like no one's that special right so if i'm able to execute it from a standpoint of my perspective with these kind of general blanket emotions then i'm pretty sure that someone will find a way to relate to it in some sort of way mm. if they don't they don't and i just have another song what's the song about uh, I don't, I don't, honestly, I would have to think about it. I would have to listen to it and think about it. But everything that I make is just what pops up on the canvas. Like I've never entered a song with like it has to be about this. I was in the, um, I was in the studio the other day with one of my friends, and he was like, "Yeah, man, can you change this part? Like it's too like political. Like I don't, I don't want, I don't want to get political. Like girl stuff." I was like, "Well, you got the wrong motherfucker, man." Because you know what, I'm, I'm gonna say what I, what I kind of have to say. At the moment, that's just how I make stuff. Like I'm, I'm not. I've never sat down and been like, "This is about this." So, um, and that doesn't discredit anyone that does do that. It's just that's not necessarily my process. But I think within my process, it being kind of so pure to the way that I think and kind of the things that I feel like are important to me or that I, I feel or say or whatever, I think um, that allows it to relate to other people because we're all more similar than we kind of like to give off. Oh, that's true. That's the magic of music. That's the area you're right. That's the area that you know. Most artists I speak to don't acknowledge that because it feels like a very personal thing, but it wouldn't matter to me unless it was actually way more universal than that. And we're exactly. Actually, we're actually pretty simple. Exactly. We're, we're complex in the most fucking strange ways where we should be simple, and we're simple in the areas we think we're super complex. Yeah, it's, 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 it's very backwards. You know, we kind of all feel and kind of want a majority of the same things and you know one person might be allergic to like peanut butter or some weird shit and it's just life is um it's not that weird life you know, is very allergy is pretty common these days that's crazy to me but it's like that's what makes it different is that you can't have a sandwich 
<laughs> Vince Staples. <laughs> Fuck, I love it. Oh, so what's the what's the world look like to you right now? If you're absorbing, maybe it's going to make it into an album further down the line, or maybe you're going to write something or create something new. Where are we at? How are we doing? How's humanity right now? I mean, you know, that's kind of where it always is. Mm -hmm. I think we kind of pick and choose what we want to acknowledge at certain times, and that's fine as well. But... Is that because we only have a certain amount of tools? Yeah, I, mm, I feel like, yeah, like... Because it's always like some... It's always a variation of a similar fucking fucked up thing. Yeah, it's, it's, it's viewpoint, and, you know, it's not like... We have the internet and all that stuff I get, but a lot of people have very minimized viewpoints and very minimized perspectives. So, you know, you only kind of know what you're shown or what you know the world wants you to see or what just happens to go across a feed or something like that so i think the world is always going to be the world as humans we have these issues that we try to overcome that's you know next to impossible because of just human nature and you know as it is also in human nature to kind of keep trying or improving and it's also into human nature to like shame people and shit so yeah that's fucked up that that to me is like probably the most toxic difficult thing because that's in everything right yeah and we all we do, all do it, do every it. single one of us. So that simple flaw, which the internet just like, oh man, it's like fucking catnip for the internet, that shit. It's just like, ah, oh, yeah, that thing that you really want to exercise, that part of you that you know sucks. You just got to rip somebody. Oh. Dude, I'm so, I'm so OCD, I have to pull words back and rewind them. If, like, if I say something that I think bad vibe, mm -hmm. like, I take that back. And I say it out loud. My friends think I'm fucking crazy because I just want to just not have it on the energy record of the universe. Yeah, I think, I th yeah, it's like, I th man, the world is the world, man. Like, that's why when it comes to music or anything, like, it's just, you know, capture the capture the snapshot and, you know, keep it moving. I'm not, you know, really trying to fix shit or change shit. It's like, I have a very morbid um, opinion on those kinds of things. So I think, you know, we are what we are. And I think it's important that people try to be better or try to get better even if it's mm. you know not really happening like that most people are instinctively assholes and then we have to really consciously figure out a way to not be that i think you're one of those people who's the opposite i think you're instinctively like trying to help <laughs> and then you go but wait i don't want to be too earnest well, I, mean, I need to also now just show that I can have got a sense of humor and i'm not taking everything too seriously it's just it's just manners bro like um I don't think about any of this shit ever at all. So when you get asked the question, like, oh, how do you feel about this or about this? Like, you want to say, like, you know, we want to be polite to people. It's like, oh, excuse me. God bless you. Like, that's everything to me as far as how I kind of speak yeah, to people. Yeah, but when you got asked the other day about the thing that's now done, right, the big fucking, the, 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 the big wrestling match, and you were like, oh, hmm. All right, well. I'm going to give you about 60 seconds on the way the record industry is completely fucking and utterly keeping itself alive and then it's going to leave very few opportunities for any of us, in particular any of us in our community in the way that we look and the kind of music that we make are going to have even less opportunities because they're just all about profit and scalability and there's no ability for us to be able to work with them anymore because they've completely and utterly fucking missed the point and they've eaten themselves completely inside out and all that shit has gone away and so who's going to represent our music and what the fuck and we're busy over here doing that? And so it, that wasn't like manners, that was like... Well, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I think the context matters, brilliant, right? by the way. No, I'm saying the context matters, right? So it's like... The, the, the morbid truth of the matter is that that was a, a event called Youth Day in the city of Long Beach where mm -hmm. children from the age of 16 to 26 that are in youth programs throughout their schools, from high school to college, to community college, sit and they talk to the man that asked him that question. It was a live stream visual. Now, the fact of the matter is that the two questions before that asked by the same young man were, how do we get more people? He was in a program that's basically for people that have been incarcerated to get into Long Beach Community College. He asked me a question about how do we stop gang violence and get people to kind of transition their life because it's hard. And then he asked the mayor about some resources. It was a live streamed event. So someone had to be filming the live streamed event on their computer and then pages that are dedicated to the city and to people cut out every question that these children asked about trying to stay alive in this environment that's had over a hundred shootings in the first four months. So if I say blatantly, no one cares about anybody else, then I look crazy, but I'm speaking to children. So my thing is, am I supposed to look at a child who just asks those questions and say, yeah, I want one of these to kill each other lyrically? What the fuck are we talking about? Right. But 
you got to be nice because I understand that people care about these things. I personally don't give a fuck. Hmm. But my thing is if you kind of hold the mirror up and say, hey, why didn't you post the other three pages and you guys are media outlets dedicated to the city because mm. that's why you're watching a live stream with the mayor that I didn't post or no one even knew I was going to be there. So if you've been watching this whole event and you saw no other clip from that event, what does that tell you about the world that we live in? Mm-hmm. And I don't really want to get into that because then it's like, then we got to start being honest. And who wants to be honest? <laughs> this is the music business, you know? <laughs> like, no one wants to be honest. <laughs> trying to be. I mean, trying to be. Aren't we? A little bit. I don't think so. You don't think so? No. What, you and I right now? Well, yeah, we, we, we can be honest, but like, <laughs> we know if we get too honest, then we all get fired. Mm-hmm. And then we know if it goes bad, no one's going to help us. So that it, that's what I mean about being honest. Like, right. you know, you know yeah, what I yeah, mean? I know you, man. Yeah, so it's like, that's what I mean about manners. It's like, you know, the ecosystem in which we all, it, like, we all exist. But it's like, you know what people want. You know, the, the I, I, you understand the kind of the brutality of human nature. And um, yeah, man, it's like whatever side of the coin um you fall on, the other side of the coin is like, mm is up for persecution and that's just how we are as people Mm. and you know we're no better i'm no better but that's just so it's like my thing my question like what was i supposed to tell the teenage children who were in youth programs to change their community and their lives no you did the right thing man but you know the only only, like you said the only thing that presented itself in that particular environment yeah but you know what i'm saying like that's the moment and i'm 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 saying these kids were brilliant like these kids had so many important questions they were asking how to properly coordinate protests so there was no violence on their school campus these are high school children no one cares about these things it seems because no out of a three-hour live stream that was in the third hour so you had to be you know what i mean looking at it and i was there pretty much all the time it's just interesting the things that we you know look at and um well because we care about you know i think that by the time the the, the, the way that we process information now, by the time it starts to get shared out, the audience is different and the audience has this much time and this much da, 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 and everything has changed. That's the purest environment you could be in in that room right there because those kids aren't looking for those distractions in that moment. They have you and they're like, this is real subject matter. These are really important issues that we want to talk about and we, we admire you. And we, we have your time and it's important to us. So we're going to make the most of it. The media is off doing that, a billion things a second. Yeah, and it's 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 just funny because like you know I get it. It's like what I'm saying is that whoever was watching that clearly was part of that initial audience, or they wouldn't have been watching it, or they were just waiting for a moment, whether I was there or not. Because like I said, no one knew I was going to be that's there. That's how our brain works now, is isn't it? That we yeah, the human nature of it is click. like the human nature of the thing is like the thing. This is the thing. This is the thing. Let me find the thing. I gotta find the thing. Put the thing up, but not a lot of people run from the thing. It's hard to run from the thing. Yeah, you know, it's, yeah, God. I mean, I still get... A, I, I actively run from the thing, and they tell me I'm just trying to be different, so I, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> different. Yeah. I don't know, man. I mean, I I'm, I don't have that many things. In these kind of conversations, very rarely is there a thing. Well, that's not your, that's not your thing. It's not my thing. Yeah. You know I'm not I mean? good at that thing. Yeah, you like music. Yeah. It's a rarity in um, music I, journalism now, to I be do, honest. I do like music, and I also, I love where it comes from. And I'm super, super curious still to this day about where the inspiration and the courage, which you need in equal measure, comes from to rele- to create and release something, to want to actually stand by it and be here today and talk about it and say, yeah, when I'm long gone, this will represent a moment in my life. And you say you don't think about it too hard, and I respect that because that's your, that's your prerogative as an artist to be in the moment, move on, do the next thing. But these things are like... Well, I, I do think they're manuscripts, no, they, right? They definitely matter. I think that's um, from an artist standpoint, that's how it should be viewed. But you know, just to be frank, there's so much money and attention, and not attention. That's probably a negative sounding word, but you know, so much money and you know, um, just praise that comes with this thing—a level of celebrity and um, just fanaticism. It's like I don't it's, know. It's not your thing. Well, it's not that it's my thing or not. It's that I can I can see how an artist would not think about it in that way because there's so much stuff that's put in front of your face. Like, you know, we're talking about millions of dollars and it's like when the whole, when the world tells you that that's what matters, like it's hard to focus on those elements of it. I, I very much think about the fact that, you know, when it's over, this is like all you have, which is why none of my projects have any continuity and they don't have any follow up or, you know, that's, um, 
a very bad business decision to, you know, oh, this is a successful album. Let's follow it up with something similar and not do something that's completely different. I, I get that that's not the smartest thing to do, but that's kind of just how I view the things Short-term I'm able success. to make. I've seen it over and over again. It's, it, it's what the audience, it's what we think we want. Mm-hmm. And then we really don't want anything from you again. In this world, like who the fuck knows what they want? And then you get to a point in time to where you're told every single day what you should be doing. And, you know, everyone's pointing out every misstep. That really affects a lot of people. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, it's psychological warfare. <laughs> yeah. So when you when, when, when you go into the studio and then you go into a meeting and then you see and then you run across a fan and then you go through a comment and everyone's telling you do this thing. It's going to be hard for a lot of people to say, well, this is how I feel. Because everyone's here. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I, I get it. But I think that, you know, if you're able to make the music that you want to make, no matter where, you know, no matter where it leaves you, you should you know value that. Um, and you know, be grateful for yourself because, like, you don't really need that much fucking money like to do that kind of. It's with people way worse off. So way worse off. Yeah. So I think um, as and as an artist, I feel like if you just look at art throughout the years, like it it wasn't really the cash cow across the board that we make it seem like it is now. So you know, you're not underperforming or you know underwhelming if you kind of value other things. That's not what the world says. And luckily for me, I just never really gave a fuck about what anybody has to say because I don't. It's not like it's real life. Nobody's ever walked to me and said, "Hey, bro, by the way, you should do this or you should do this." I've never experienced that in my life, so it's like no. Um, well, that's actually by one of the by the way one of the best lessons of it for any young creative who's listening to this right now is that if you can establish, in my opinion, if you can establish that precedent very early on, not in a way that's combative, but just in a yeah, way that's sure. really thoughtful and firm and like I got this, and if we're going to work well together, just trust me. That trust that others need to give in to you. We spend out the psychology of the music business is we make this music and then we trust everyone else t- to go and bring it to life. Mm-hmm. It's so fucking backward. Yeah, I mean, and to be honest, I mean, no one's ever trusted me with anything. Like, besides, like, Michael, Lakin, like, people that I work with, obviously. Corey, yeah. Yeah, and, and like, people, on, every time I've ever been in a studio with somebody, they're telling me I should do something different. Really? So it's like, yeah, I've never, no one's ever, ever, like, not once. So um, it's understanding, um, I understand, like, yeah, yeah, it's 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 about understanding why people do the things that they do, and not taking it personal. Like, you can't really take nothing personal in this shit. Like, it's kind of all over the place, and it's changing every moment of every day. So I think you know whatever makes you happy. It might make somebody happy to be at that level that you speak about, where they're shaking hands and kissing babies and trying to chase the next thing. Like, that's a talent. It's a talent to be what people want it's a talent to not be what people want it's a talent to find a way to be in the middle I just don't think you're going to make your best art if you look back over the course of your life I think you guys try and get higher above the cloud I think that's where the the great shit is but it's but it's art so it's like critique is just critique if it's art yeah you know what I mean it's art so it 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 ends up falling where it falls I guess a bunch it's fucking thousands of songs that have came out this year so the millions of songs that have came out throughout you know, the beginning of fucking music. A lot of them shits were probably good. Nobody give a fuck about them anymore. Yeah, but you all me- fade away. But you're me- you're measuring yourself against anybody. But like, okay, let's let's talk about Nas that you name check. Probably not as literal as I'm about to do it. But you you mentioned Aphex Twin in one of your songs on this album, right? Mm-hmm. I just think that there's artists out there that figure figure it out early on, like you, like Aphex Twin. You know, there's uh, Tom York, many great artists. PJ Harvey, great fucking artists all over the world. Frank, I think, is like that. He's just like, you know, I'm just gonna make what I'm gonna make, man. And, you know, if it's authentic and it's real and people love it, then should be able to make another one. Yeah, but that's those that's the minority. And it's the vast minority. And especially when you think about genre, because none of those people that you name work in my genre of music. So that's a limiting factor. Yeah, I was pulling from my ass. So, I mean, I probably could think of a couple. No, of right course, here. but I'm just saying, like, yeah. it depends on who you are. It depends because I can, like, say in the environment in which I grew up, if I went, if I went home, I was home yesterday, mm-hmm. and if I asked anybody, Actually, about, that's not strictly true. I was including you in that, but anyway, carry but on. I don't really make rap music like that. It's just they wouldn't let me put anything else on it when I came out. But that's another conversation we had a meeting about and everything. But um, when it came time to like you know talk about music, no, I would be surprised if anyone that I grew up with or in my environment who any of those artists were. And that doesn't demean those artists that you name, and it doesn't demean their own listening experience. I think people are so vast, like it's billions of people in this world, and we all kind of gravitate towards other things. So the fact of the matter is that everybody's best is different, and wherever they fit as people, like they should be able to make that commentary. I think that's the main thing that I 
think is important is knowing who you are and staying true to yourself and your perspective and fit in within that world. You know, it's that's the, we should be fine to do that. Where do you find your critical muscle? Like your, you know, the critique inside of you is most triggered. Like wh what are you most critical of? As far as like my music? No, as far as what you watch or listen to or how you relate to other people's art or other people's performance. Like when are you most charged up about? Never. Never. It's either, you know, I like it or I don't. But if I don't like it, that doesn't make it, that doesn't, I'll never say I don't like anything ever. Like it just, I don't think it's necessary. Yeah. Um. I think everybody, I don't know. It's just, I, I, I value story and I value, I guess, process so i can listen to like um little boosy devils and understand that the writing and that is just as complex to me as some bob dylan shit that somebody's gonna throw on and say this is the greatest songwriter of all time but i don't know what he's talking about i don't relate and i don't care does not doesn't demean what that person has done you know what i mean but when i hear little boosy devils it's like i understand exactly what he's talking about i understand the cadence i understand the storytelling i understand it um and that puts me in a position where i can say that's like one of my favorite songs i've ever heard um, that changes for everybody. So, like, who am I to say this is good or this isn't if that's your process? You know, it's, it's a bunch of stuff in museums that we don't understand, but it's just different medium, different time period, the way that it's separated, the way that it's measured is different. So within music, I feel like it's just so many people that have lived so many different lives. I don't know all of it. So the music that you make now, you this is a, this is a, a, a part of your life the writing, the, the creating is part of your life. Where, what part of life sparks the most curiosity in you now? Where would you love to immerse your time and experience to better understand something now? Is there something that you're particularly curious about that you're on the verge of a journey on or that you're starting to really explore? Um, not really. And that's something that um, I, I could be different. I wish it was different. I'm just not that kind of person. I'm um, pretty simple. It's so like I've never wanted to really, you know, travel or see any part of the world. I've never wanted to do any of those things. Just naturally, it's not like I'm not um, that kind of person. Like I'm cool just being at home, chilling, going down the street. So what's know? touring like for you? I'm on the bus and I'm in the hotel and I do my show and I go to sleep. I don't, they go out, but I don't, I've never been that kind of person. Mm-hmm. I might walk to get some food or something like that by myself. But you're not exploring the city? No, nah, no. Nah. And I, I probably should, but it just, I, I just, it's just not in me. Uh, we were recently, we, no, it wasn't recent. When we did Primavera, they had a blast. They were out every day, every night, went to go see the city, sites, all the stuff. I just, you know, yeah, it's not, just yeah, chilling. Fair enough. But I feel like that is a very important part of music is to kind of figure out things to be inspired by and things to embrace. Um, I think based on the way that my upbringing was and the interest in hobbies that I had previously. Um, simplicity is important, like just being able to have um, a positive outlook on life and just kind of see things for what they are. Yeah, can we talk a little bit about that simplicity as a, um, a tool? Like simplicity, rather than just being a product of the environment you're in, but actually being of some service to you? Um, I think it just depends on who you are. You know, I think sometimes... But like even as a kid, like you talked about your upbringing and stuff, like just like when, how did simplicity become part of your life where it actually was like, it enabled you to be who you are now today and enable you to do, to find your creative voice? I mean, I honestly wouldn't even know. I look at it from a standpoint of um, access. Well, I'm not from a place or, you know, um, a social or, you know, class that has access to things. So it's like life was just always simple. But I never felt bad about it or worse about it. So when you get, you know, one day I'm going to get rich and famous and I'm going to get out of here and never come back. Like, that's never been a thought of mine. So I think I just never had that issue with kind of my upbringing or where I came from. I kind of understood the circumstances a little bit. And um, I think being understanding is important right, for me personally. So I was never like, I never had a clash with my environment or my um my upbringing or the way that I was raised. So. It was there was no there was no I'll show you. No. You know a lot you know a lot of ambition yeah, yeah. is wrapped up and I'll show you. Yeah, no. I just um I think at a certain point in time I just wanted um more. And my more wasn't like crazy. My more was like 
like a like a room or like a bed or some shit. So like once I got to that point, it was nothing to talk about. It's kind of been on cruise control since then, and I'm just making stuff if I feel like it. You have a little more than that um, because you've made smart people decisions. Yeah, exactly. And put good people around you to build around you and not ask you to help them build more of them, <laughs> which is what a lot of management, a lot of labels do. They hire a client to boost their roster, right? Yeah, yeah. It's the opposite for you. You've created a boutique industry around what you do, and you've just got, they happen to be really smart and really successful, so it's been good. So like getting out of the room and get, getting more on top of that and getting to a place where um, I guess, and maybe you, I'll need you to qualify this, but I'll, so I'll start it, but like the term, the term like security or comfort or something that feels like it can't be taken away. How did that feel when you realized like, shit, this journey I'm on or whatever it is, making stuff, creating stuff has got me to a place where I got some fucking solid foundation here. Like, I'm yeah, well, I think honestly, I think in music you'll never have security. So it's like I don't, you know, you got you know, like I'll tell you who off, but you have um historic like musicians that have made you know hits in multiple genres, and they living in a um trailer, you know, downtown LA on Skid It can happen, but isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so it's it, like, they can it, always take it from you. And I think about the end of a lot of these musicians' careers, like, music is just such a grimy business that, like, I think working in music and working in music and being black in music, you can never be like, oh, I made it, because, you know, it gets tricky. It got bad for a lot of artists towards the end. You know, I don't want to say their names or kind of demean them in any way, but we all know the stories. It's like they had the world and then someone took it from them. Like, that's a very real thing. So, but I think the security outside of financials is the important part to me. The The fact knowing that um, the perspective that I had on life and other people has changed. And even if I don't fully believe in it, because I don't. Um, <laughs> the fact that you believe in the change? Yeah. But the fact that you know that, you know, there is a different viewpoint or a better viewpoint in life is is solace in a sense so what is the change if you if your viewpoint has changed but you don't necessarily believe in the change then what is the purpose of it well to see how other people view shit right like my thing is you know if i, I, I we can sit here and you know you see how the world views art you see how people how the world views creatives i personally don't find any artist or any person alive to be more significant or better than anyone else with their contribution with any of those things but I know that the world feels that way. So because I know the world feels that way, when someone tells you me their music, my music affects them or changes something, I tell them thank you and I'm appreciative of it. I don't have to believe that if they believe that. I just know that there are other perspectives. And I, I, when I was younger, I don't think we thought of other perspectives. So that's what I mean about I don't necessarily have to believe in it to effectively work towards it. Because by making music and doing shows and taking time to take pictures with people and speak to people, you're, you're effectively living in that world, even though you might not believe in it, mm -hmm. because I've never asked anybody for a picture. We had like, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not that kind of person, but I understand why people do those things. So are you a fan? I am yeah, for sure a fan of, I mean, I appreciate the things that people do. So I'll, I'll consider it that maybe not to the level of um, a lot of the things, but I'm not really like, I'm not like a, there's not like a favorite person or like I don't you know when you're a kid and somebody's like what's your favorite color your favorite number I never had answers to those stupid fucking questions <laughs> so it's like now that I'm older I like I wish I had answers and I'll make some shit up but it's like I don't my, my, my mind honestly just doesn't work like exhausting that exhausting having to constantly make some shit up just so you can actually get through a conversation with people who expect those answers nah man I've done you know <laughs> oh man so what inspired this album or what was this or what was that even though it might not be a natural thing that you think right you know the reference point that people are asking for so then you think about those things in that way and then you find the answer that'll suffice. It's like, you know, we're not in this motherfucker alone. Like things get annoying and things get um hard to kind of digest. But like, like I said, we're not special to the point that like I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, man, that's not how my shit work. Whether that's the truth or not, you have to have an answer because that answer kind of can convey to someone else how they should view your music. It's what we talked about being in the studio. How do you how do we view these things? How do I digest these things? How can I utilize what you made? to help me make something or get through my day. Like those things are just as important as whatever the truth is. So how do you feel? When, how did you feel when you finished this album? How, how did, was there a feeling of, of accomplishment? Did you feel changed or different or proud of it or w w just right across the spectrum without putting any words in your mouth? What was the very basic feeling of experience when you finished this body of work and you knew it was done? Um, you know, completion. I think as I get older, I realize completion points. I've never like, 
ever felt like I finished the album besides um, Summertime 06, but then we changed it um, for like a double disc to like, because they told me they gave me more money. They didn't though, but you know how that goes. I was, I was, I was young. I, I needed that, but um, so I was like, I, it would end up being a double disc. Um, so I kind of didn't feel like that was completed. I didn't feel like Big Fish or any of the other ones were completed. Um, Ramona, kinda, but not really. Um, I feel like Vince Staples needed like two, three more songs, um, or you know, a song or two off. But this, I feel like, is pretty much wrapped up. I took a song off this uh, project. Actually, I don't really do that much. I've never what really done that. What prompted you to do that? If I can be granular, I just didn't that. like it. Yeah, it wasn't done. It just, I didn't like it. No, this is great. And I just, it was like, no, it's not. Um, but, you know, learning how to make those decisions. Um, so I felt like it was completed. I was really appreciative of the people who worked on it and like kind of the strides that they took, and like how they learned more. Um, the musicality on this is wonderful, man. The, the arrangements and the sounds and just these kind of like, just, just layers and floating guitars that just kind of come in and just ride with you it's great man yeah it's like and even like going in the mix and like yeah don't mix it right yeah yeah like i don't i don't want to know it's beautiful flaws on this yeah and i think i think that's like i was you know appreciative of being able to execute that because i'm just now at a point now to where people are like um okay you know when you're younger it's like oh trust me do it this way or do it that way and then you know so you just kind of when you're in music and you don't know anything about it and the whole you know structure tells you um that they're doing you a favor, then you become overtly grateful. And it's like, well, I'm grateful. I'm thankful for the opportunity. So I'm just going to kind of listen. But then as I got older, I was like, you know, I don't need, it's nothing that's going to come from that. Um, I was just pulling up the track listing just where you were talking there. Mm -hmm. it, was, it really carries itself in a very kind of very thoughtful, you know, I won't use the D word, but um, thoughtful, a very mm -hmm. thoughtful way until it gets to it. I'm going to fuck this up because New Zealanders can't speak French. We're good at almost that's everything, okay. but yeah, we can't speak I can't speak French. Uh, Etouffee. Mm -hmm. That's like the only, that's maybe one of the only moments. That and Little Homies, I feel like, two of the only moments where it's like light on its feet, if, if, if that makes sense. No, I get what you're saying. Definitely. I definitely get what you're saying. Um, yeah, I mean, those moments are important. Um, and it's funny because like contrast, because perspective is everything. Um, Etouffee is a song about music. The radio song was a song about music. Um, I love that song, by the way. Thank you. Little Homies is like, um, it's um, it's it's lighter production wise, but it's like about you know what happens when you die. Mm. <laughs> so no, it's like, yeah, yeah, no, so no, it's I, like, I, I, think, I got that. But that's why that's why um, context is so important because we all see things differently. So the execution to me is never like topical. It's just more like, what does the song sound like? Yeah, and I and, and I I'm I, I'm probably gonna spend my lifetime talking to you if we get a chance to talk again. I hope we always do. Um, trying to get inside that and and just marvel at different ways how you just keep telling me the same answer, which is like that's really not that deep. But but, <laughs> but I'm so interested in knowing like how how in a piece of music like Little Homies is gonna get you to that place. Yeah, I mean you know everybody has their um, everybody has their viewpoint. And I think it's important to kind of stick to the viewpoint that you're comfortable with. Cause you know you're just you. Like there's no reason to try to you know change the fucking world, man. It's just they're just songs. Man. I think you're doing it without even trying. I hate to break it to you, but every time you put a record out and fans listen to it, it becomes a part of our life. It becomes part of our DNA. And what I'm saying is that's enough. You know, it doesn't need to. It doesn't need to go past that point. You know, for me at least. You know, I know everybody values things differently, but for me, you know, put it out. People listen to it. They like it or they don't. And then if you get to do it the next time, that's the gift that you get is the ability to do it the next time because most people don't get that it's true you know and congratulations on the show um another season no we'll see we're we're we're, we're kind of uh figuring some things out right now so we'll see hope so I, I really feel like um that's a really important moment i think for anybody those kids in that room i know the subject matter in long beach was far more uh, stakes were far higher and far more in real life than that but i think it's it's some it's really important for kids to feel like they can ideate to a point where someone's going to help them create and then most importantly, actually execute. And I know that that was a real process for you and Corey and the team. And I love the pivot based on the re interview I read recently where you said the meetings weren't really catching. There was no fish on the hook here. Like no one. Oh playing. yeah. Yeah. So rather than just keep pounding through that door, you, you went right down another corridor, took another right, another corridor, took a left, 
double back around, found it, went up through the fucking air conditioning unit, landed back in, the, and somehow then it was like, oh yeah, come on in, like you know what I mean? Like, yeah, but also, also that's that a lot of that is artist ego, you know, because you know someone goes to say community college and then they go to their local university, then they go to NYU and they study film and then they kind of just engulf themselves in this world and they're an artist and they can't get something off the ground without a short or mm -hmm. without previous work. But since, you know, I make songs and people know who I am, I didn't just expect someone to just give me something, especially when there's no, um, there's nothing beforehand that's, that's what would suffice. Like even when we did the show and they're like, Oh, Oh, I'm, I was writing the scripts and I had a lot of input, a lot of things. It, it wasn't viewed like that. It wasn't contracted like that. It was, you know, a vanity plays so to say because you know a lot of artists oh this is the this show or this is the that show they don't really but you have to work and you have to work hard at it so it didn't really even bother me to have to go around because you know a lot of great directors who say they do amazing creative music videos you're not a you're still a first-time director so then you yeah. have to go do a short and you have to do something indie and go to a festival circuit and well, hopefully it's somebody it's gonna make picks it better up. as well in the yeah end. exactly it's gonna so. make it better and i really appreciated that part of the process because like you learn how to do things as you go and I'm I I'm I'm a process person, so like I really I like that it worked out that way. But it's important, like you said, to show people that there is work that is attached to this level of, you know, success. And this isn't even the top level of success and it's a lot of hard work. So I think it's important to kind of share that with people and not make it look as glamorous as we like to a lot of the time. Did you feel satisfied with the at the end of that that first round of experience from like the let's get past the whole kind of like the the groundwork you put in, but the script writing producing your own show, acting in your own show, ultimately promoting it, seeing it come to fruition. It's a very different experience than music. Some would say even harder, even more, st even tougher, way more conversations, way more people putting their hands on the yeah, shit. It's more difficult. It's more money at stake. Yeah. Um, more people. More hands on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so how did you feel at the end of the experience? It wasn't easy, but I don't like easy things were kind of annoying, but I mean, making the things were easy like because i feel like you either do it or you don't and i can stay within my perspective and find things that align with my perspective the hard parts are like how do you step into this room and you know hear people say oh you know this doesn't translate with an audience basically meaning that black people don't make or like this kind of shit and then how do you showcase which which could be true from their perspective because you know certain things do or don't get greenlit we have these conversations about people of color getting positions and women getting positions and having the opportunity to tell their stories. It's a, it's a real thing. So from their standpoint, no one wants to be the person who green lights the thing that gets them fired. I a hundred percent agree. So the hard part is to convince people and kind of try to galvanize the people that are working on the project and get them to kind of believe in the thing that you're doing. And I think at the end of it, you know, having a conversation, I was like, Oh yeah, we see what you, we see it now. But until the show came out, um, the people were like, um, a lot of the people that were producing with us and working with us and that gave us our opportunities were like, yeah, I just don't get it. It doesn't make sense yet. I was like, oh, well, there are so many things that kind of live in this vein. They just don't look like this. And you have to understand and give it that grace because... Yeah, but not let your ego get in between that that comment and the actual execution of this thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, and um, even from a reference standpoint, if you're a reference standpoint, like um, a lot of the people that I was referencing with like kind of a lot of our shot listing or like kind of the way that it was, things were being written... They had never translated even into youth culture, let alone black youth culture, let alone hip hop culture. So you, you have some to examples have, like, of that. I mean, you're saying, it's, oh, we have to do coverage. We're not going to do coverage. We're going to do Super Wise, Roy Anderson, um, or we're going to go to like some, you know, 18 millimeter cowboy shit. Okay, show me that on TV. It doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So you have to understand that what you're asking for is kind of crazy in the scheme of things. You know what I mean? And, and do you sometimes feel when you're watching the back and maybe you're watching it go out at the same time when it comes out or whatever, that maybe like, it's like you're in the world's, but in, in the, in the greatest in joke of all time. Cause you're right. Unless you explain that to people, a lot of people aren't going to recognize the influence or inspiration behind those things. And it must be kind of fun to go. People aren't going to fucking ever believe where I got the idea for that shot from. Well, no, honestly, I don't, I don't put it past anybody, especially people that are into those things. I feel like some people are well, into those things. Some people will for sure. You know what I'm saying? But it's like, I think that's for those people. I think, um, and that making things that are kind of in their own world are, is important to me. You know, when I was a kid, I didn't really know anything about music past, like things that you heard on the radio or TV or like things that were kind of like, you know, skateboard shit, like, you know, Stones Throw type stuff. So it's like, there's so much about music I did know, but the things that I do did know and I did digest, I was very aware of. So mm -hmm. we all have our own pockets in which we exist. 
So you just try to hit as many of those pockets as, as comfortable for you and, um, you know, go from there. Super funny. Isn't interesting how those kind of, um, those introductions, that stuff that we get turned onto as a kid is we so dismissive of it at the time because we're just thrashy and running around, but it's so important. Like if you landed in on any other cultural or creative touchstone area mood board mm -hmm. it changes you changes you completely yeah 100 percent. like you are the most successful stones throw interview uh, influenced artist of the of the modern moment right now like like it's great like, yeah maybe oh no uh, tyler tyler maybe yeah but, yeah, you, but tyler, you know, tyler, i'm up there though but five probably but it, five, six. but this is a generational thing mm -hmm. this is a generational thing this is a group of artists who grew up in los angeles who are influenced by peanut butter wolf in a scene that's fucking cool that only a few people, it's like what they say about, it's like what Brian Eno said about the Velvet Underground, right? Like, mm -hmm. there was like this many people in the room, but all of them went on to do great things. Mm -hmm. That's fucking cool. That's success. Exactly. I think, you know, success, you, you are able to measure it. And um, I think, you know, we should say that more. We should. And we should honor the fact that, I mean, I feel so grateful that I'm still able to be a part of this Broader conversation, play music, talk about it, get fucking stuck into conversations about it at a time when you and your friends from that from that era are all in your own right doing legacy work, like amazing creative shit. Do you ever allow yourself the opportunity to just sit in that observation long enough to even just appreciate that <clears throat> somehow through all of that, you and a group of people of the same age are doing cool shit and most of the time people get out of your way yeah um definitely um but i think for me just because my background is just so much different than theirs um this is you know impossible so i, I do appreciate it and the way in which it changed you know my life is very much so life or death so you can't ignore those things